Hi everyone, good morning. Welcome to our Worldly Wednesday edition of the Kids Learning Club. I am so excited to, to, uh, for this particular edition of the Kids Learning Club with you uh, because I had a wonderful uh, follower or viewer uh, that shared some information about where she is coming from, where she is watching us from. And she shared with me what she wants you to know about her beautiful country. Now, I'm going to keep it a secret until the end. Uh, so you can know that this information is coming right from a local. Um, and this is everything that they want to share with you about where they live, which is so exciting. Good morning, Anila. How are you? So... Welcome again, for those of you that are coming on in. Sorry, I was a couple minutes uh, late this morning. Uh, hopefully you can still stick with us. So I was just sharing that at the end of today's video, I have a special surprise, okay? So you'll have to, uh, you'll have to wait for that. All right, so let's dive right in since we, uh, I am starting a little bit late here. Um, yesterday's riddle, uh, we had some uh, people that answered it correctly, quite a few actually, so congratulations. You guys are really getting really, really good at this. Yesterday's riddle was, what kind of coat can only be put on when wet? What kind of coat can only be put on when wet? Good morning, Mateo. Okay, so those of you that didn't catch it yesterday, maybe you want to guess. The answer is... Paint, a coat of paint. That's right. So a coat of paint is not a real coat that you put on. That's just the word that we use um, when we are applying paint to anything. We say, oh, I put on the first coat of paint. Oh, I'm gonna put on a second coat to make it darker. So that's how we talk about paint. Uh, so with our riddles, we sometimes like to play with the secondary meaning of words. A lot of congratulations with that for today's riddle have your thinking caps on for today okay ready what occurs in one minute two times in a moment and next thousand years? Hmm. what occurs once in a minute two times in a moment, and never in a thousand years. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna give you a clue, because this one can be a little bit tricky. We really like playing with words here at How We Learn. So I would encourage you to think about the words that I said and not really what they mean, okay? so. once in a minute, two times in a moment, and never in a thousand years. Okay, I'll write it in the comments at the end if we forget. So, hi Deborah. Hello Nikki Hayden Sloman Lennox. Thank you so much for joining us again. We love having you guys. All right, so this week we are continuing with our fun facts related to space. Uh, if you're new to joining us this week, weeks ago, we shared fun facts about the human body. And we're having fun sticking with the theme. So right now we're going to stick with the theme of space. Yesterday we did a little focus on Mercury and Venus. Uh, today we are taking a look at Mars and Jupiter. Okay? And what we're actually doing is we are working away from the sun. Okay, so the sun being at the center of our solar system and then Mercury we learned is the, is the closest planet. Here, here's the sun. Mercury is the closest planet. Then Venus, Earth is actually the next one, but I skipped it. We live on it, but you know what? Maybe I should share some fun facts later about the Earth. And then after that is uh, Mars and Jupiter. Okay, let's dive in. We learned yesterday that Mercury uh, does not have any moons, but Mars has two moons, okay, which is really, really interesting because we only have one, so that's funny for us. Um, we, uh, astronauts, have been successful in actually traveling to Mars, landing, 
on Mars, well, with, with robots, okay, and exploring what's there. So we actually have a lot of um, real action about the planet Mars. Uh, however, it's interesting to put into perspective that there have been 40 missions to Mars, but only 18 have been successful, okay? So 40 missions to Mars and only 18 have been successful where they've been actually able to properly land and gather information. So it's kind of nice to know that even astronauts put in a lot of work. Thank you. There's a little pause for some of us to just continue, okay? Uh, so what I was saying, a very important point is that I want us to feel encouraged because even our astronauts put in a lot of work to go to Mars and they build important equipment and sometimes it just doesn't work and they have to go back and try again, okay? So if you're struggling today with anything that you're doing, just think about our astronauts, okay? They work very hard to get themselves out to space and they only got it right 18 times out of 40, okay? So we just have to keep back and trying again. Uh, so, and our last fun fact about, um, about Mars that we've gathered from the, the many times that we've been able to go on is that there are signs of there being water on Mars, which is really exciting for astronauts because astronauts are always really curious about whether there is life on other planets in the way that there is life here on Earth. And for a really, really long time, scientists have guessed or hypothesized that we do think that there's life somewhere uh, on other planets. There has to be, they think. And they've been able to find signs of water on Mars, which is exciting because most living things need water. Maybe there's something on Mars that's using the water to live. We don't know, but maybe, which is exciting to think about. Okay. And now on to Jupiter, okay? Um, Jupiter has this really, really large red spot on it when you look at it, and it's actually a swirling sandstorm that's been going on for thousands of years. Isn't that interesting? So there's a storm that hasn't stopped. <laughs> it's on Jupiter, and you can see it as a swirling red spot on the planet. Um, as well, let me just check here, do, 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 do. on Jupiter, they have the shortest day of all the planets. Okay, now we've talked about rotations for some of the other planets. So what does it mean, short day? That means that Jupiter spins on its axis really, really quickly, which is interesting because it's such a big planet. It's such a huge planet, really fast. So if it spins really, really fast all the way around, Okay, and it spins uh, way faster than all the other planets, meaning that it has the shortest day. Okay, if we were just hanging out on Jupiter. All right, so our facts for today, we talked about Mars and then Jupiter. So Mars has two moons. We have been able to go to Mars, or astronauts have, but only 18 of the 40 missions have actually been successful. From the information that our astronauts have received from Mars, there are potential signs of life, and we we can guess that because there are water being on the planet. With Jupiter, they have a swirling sandstorm, or well, it is a storm that has been going on for thousands of years. You can see it on the planet with a red spot, and they have the shortest day of all the planets because Jupiter spins very very quickly. How interesting is that? So. For today's poem, I have another lovely poem from Marianne Hoberman. And I shared a beautiful poem about gardening with you uh, from her, as well as one that a lot of us really enjoyed called You and I. And I did include that one in the links. Um, now, when, let me see here, when, if you click on any of the links for her poems, you can see some of the ones. Uh, that I haven't read yet. So if you really like what she writes, go on the website that I share in the comments and you can read some more. So today's poem is called A Catch. And it's about um, an activity that's actually pretty common here in Ontario, I would say. Not amongst everyone, uh, but it's common enough. 
called, well, fishing, okay? I'm sure most of you know, uh, know about fishing. And very common here in Ontario because in the part of Canada that I'm in, well, actually in a lot of, most of Canada provinces, uh, we have an abundance of fresh water. We're very, very lucky in that way. Uh, there are a lot of rivers and a lot of lakes here. Um, and a favorite pastime for a lot of people is to be fishing. And it's tied with um, what our First Nations people also did uh, here in Canada. So most First Nations people would live off the land and fish if they were close to these fresh bodies of water. Um, and many people settled, fished in their own countries, but uh, they were so happy when they came to Canada, there was so much uh, fresh water. There's so many opportunities to fish. So I wonder, does anyone that's uh, watching like to fish too? Do you fish to get your lunch or your dinner? Do you fish just for fun? I'd love to know. So let's get started with this beautiful poem by Marianne Hoberman called A Catch. I've caught a fish, come look. I've got him on my hook. He saw my worm down in the pond and fishes all are very fond of worms. So up he swam to mine and now I've got him on my line. He's just the proper size to munch. I think I'll have him fried for lunch. <laughs> okay, so there we go. I guess Marianne Hoberman likes fishing so she can have some fish for lunch. Okay, let's read that one again. And if you can do it with me, we can try to repeat the final rhyme. There is one little trick that she uses in this poem that I wanna share with you. Sometimes we think that when we write a poem, we have to write the line and then the end of the sentence is at the end of the line. Marianne Hoberman does a fun little trick that some poets really like to play with, where they write their sentence, or they write the beginning of their line, they don't finish the sentence, and they finish it in the next line. It can cause funny things with how you say it, um, and it can just make you play tricks to ensure you're rhyming. It's a lot of fun. Let's see if you catch it. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to try my best to pause so that you can say the rhyming word with me. The poem is called A Catch by Marianne Hoberman. I've caught a fish, come look. I've got him on my hook. He saw my worm down in the pond and fishes are all very fond of worms. So up he swam to mine and now I've got him on my line. He's just the proper size to munch. I think I'll have him fried for lunch. Okay, so if you were listening, perhaps you caught that funny little play with sentences and, and placing where she says, and fishes all are very fond of worms. So up he swam to mine. It kind of does a little funny rhythmic thing there. All right, so there's a great idea for writing a poem or a picture about an activity that you like to do or whatever you like to have for lunch. So speaking of activities, uh, let's take a look at our activity challenge for today. Uh, for today's activity challenge, we have a clothespin popsicle stick word matching activity, which is great uh, for anyone that's maybe just starting to learn their letters and their letter sounds to someone that is working with sight words or has some words that they wanna, uh, want to practice uh, the spelling for. So let me get started and show you. All right, for this activity, in the title, it says clothespin and popsicle sticks. That means you need some clothespins, hopefully that you can write on, okay? And some popsicle sticks. Now, I have a, a very thick popsicle stick. Um, if you eat popsicles, in commercial popsicle, popsicles, they usually have uh, thinner ones. If you have those, it'll work too. But bigger ones are a little better for fitting your, your letters. And I do have wooden ones. If you have plastic, uh, clothespins that may have some bumps on them and it's hard to write on, just put a label or uh, stick a piece of paper on it and write the letters. So what are you gonna do? Um, you can, to start off with learning how to read, reading our names is usually one of the first things that we read, which is why I have my daughter's name here, which is Amelia, okay? And 
what you do is you take your child's name and the name of anyone that's in the family, okay? So if you have brothers and sisters, mom, dad, can write mom, dad, and you're gonna put the letters of all of those names on your clothespins. There I have an A, I've got, what do I have here? A little A, okay? And we're gonna jumble them all up. And we're going to see, can we find and match our clothespins to our popsicle sticks? So you go around and you look for your letters. You can try your best to do them in order. Okay, so what's the first letter I'm gonna have to find here? Hmm, I need to look for a big A. Where's a big A, big A? Got it. Okay, I found my big A. I'm gonna clip it here to my word, okay? Now, let's see, what's the next letter that I'm gonna have to find? Oh, let's see, let's see. Hmm, maybe I'll, I need to find an M. Where's an M? Okay, so when I clip the letter, I almost forgot, I have to try to say the sound, okay? So, A ah, for Amelia and A, A ah for A, and hmm, I found my letter M. What sound does an M make? Mmm. Okay, I'm going to clip it on here. Mmm. For M. There we go. Now, as we clip them all along, we continue to try to make the sound. Okay, that goes with it. There we go. Try my best. I found my E. And my L. And my I. Whoops. Got to squish them a little bit here. And my A. Now, once we have all the letters together, okay, for those of us that are maybe starting to learn our letter sounds, we can try our best to blend the sounds together. Okay, we can remind ourselves, okay, a, m, e, okay, u, e, a. Okay, let me try to blend them. Um, um, e, l, um, and you continue that way, and you try to sound out the name, okay? For some of us, we've seen the names of our families many, many times. Uh, so we might actually be able to say the name before we sound it out because we see the first couple letters and we already know, okay? Um, but I would still challenge you, if you think you know it, go through slowly and try to and try to say all the sounds so that you can see how that person's name works and how it all fits together with the letters. Now, if you guys feel really comfortable with your names and you'd like to do something else uh, with mom and dad or grandma and grandpa or your older sibling, whoever's with you, uh, you can pick a theme that you're working on. Maybe it's some uh, sight words, maybe you're working on all at words, A-T-A-T, -A -T, and you're gonna add some letters to build different words. Or, like my daughter, it's her birthday this week. So I think that we're going to try to do this activity with some birthday and party related words. We might um, write the word cake or party or gift on our popsicle sticks and see if she can uh, match them. So that's a theme we can use, okay? So uh, this is really great for all different range of literacy learners. And if you need some more ideas of what to do with this, we'll share the activity link at the bottom. Okay, so. On to my fabulous surprise. I'm so excited about this. So Wednesdays, what do we do on Wednesdays? Wednesdays is Worldly Wednesday. And that's where we go into our atlas and we find somewhere, um, a, a special place where one of our viewers is coming from, okay? And this time I got one of our viewers, Monica, uh, to share with me some facts that she wants you to know about her beautiful country. Now, where does she come from? She comes from the wonderful country of Nepal. Nepal! Can you imagine someone's watching us from Nepal? Fabulous! Now, when we start every time with Worldly Wednesday, okay, we always try to locate ourselves on the world map. All right, so I am in Canada, okay? So that means I'm over here and I'm in Ontario, okay, kind of close to the United States. I'm right there, all right? Now, Nepal is all the way over here, okay? Practically on the other side of the world. So if you have a globe, a circular globe, you could see that right there. So there's China, there's India, and there's Nepal right in there. 
Okay, now let's zero in on Nepal in the continent of Asia. That's where she is. Okay, so let's go into Asia here. And I said that Nepal is found between India and China. Let's look really close now. China's there. We have India there. And our purple country, which is a little bit long, right there is Nepal. Okay? Now, if any of you have ever been really curious about this area here of Asia, you know that there are lots of mountains. And actually... That starts off our fun facts about Nepal. Nepal is where you can find the world's highest peak, Mount Everest, is in Nepal. And eight out of the world's 10 largest peaks are actually all there. Okay, so you have Mount Everest, it's the tallest one, but then there's tall mountain number two, tall mountain number three. It's all in Nepal, okay? So there's only two of the top 10 that are elsewhere. Okay, and Nepal is um, known for its natural beauty. It has some beautiful, beautiful, beautiful nature there. And it's actually home of a few endangered wild animals. Okay, and the ones that uh, Monica wanted you to know about are the tiger, the one-horned rhinoceros, snow leopards, and red pandas. You can find them all in Nepal, and these wonderful, beautiful animals, unfortunately, are endangered, so they do need to be protected. And she shared some adorable photos of them with me, and I'd like to share them with you in the comments. Um, she wants you to know that Nepal is known for their temples, their culture, and other what we call world heritage sites. So these are locations where... Um, it has been agreed that they are so important to history and culture that they need to be protected. So uh, countries use their resources as best as they can to protect these very important special historical places. Okay, And uh, of those places, they have a lot of very beautiful temples, which will also share uh, pictures of those with you. Uh, the, con the language that they speak is Nepali. Okay, but they have over a hundred different languages spoken by diff different ethnic groups within Nepal. So they have one main language, Nepali, and then there's hundreds of other ones. I was talking about some, some other countries that had a few different languages there, but hundreds, my goodness. Now, the most common way to greet in Nepali, and maybe some of us are familiar, is Namaste. Okay, um, we do hear that greeting uh, frequently. Uh, here when you're talking about Eastern Eastern religions or Eastern practices, but uh, I didn't know that that was a, a word that is Nepali. Namaste. The people of Nepal love to eat rice, lentil soup, and curries. I feel like we could be great friends, Monica, because I just had a lentil curry the other day. <laughs> now, another very popular food that they have, a street food, is called momo. And it is a kind of dumpling, which she says is, has actually become popular all around the world. And we'll share pictures of that too at the end, just to uh, make your mouth water. Now, a last fun fact uh, that I'd like to share is that Nepal has a very unique flag, okay? What makes the flag unique? Well, most of our flags are inside a rectangle Okay, makes it nice and easy to wave them around. They're inside a rectangle. And then every country has their unique pictures or colors inside the flag. No, no, not Nepal. Their flag is actually made up of two triangles. Maybe you've seen it before because it's very unique. Now you know that it's from Nepal. And again, I will share the image with you in the comments. So the two triangles, I was very curious. I'm like, why? Why, Monica? Why two triangles? What does it all mean? And she told me that the two flags, uh, sorry, the two triangles represent the highest peaks, the mountains. Makes total sense. The colors they use are red and blue. The red is a symbol of bravery and also represents the color of their flower. The, I hope I get this right, ro rhododendron. Rhododendron is their national flower and it's red. The blue border represents peace. They also have pictures of a sun and a moon, and that represents permanence or longevity, okay, which means to last a long time. Isn't that interesting? I don't know about you, but I think 
I want to go to Nepal one of these days, okay? Uh, I think you'll be able to feel like you're there with the beautiful pictures that she shared and your mouth will probably be watering when you see all the tasty food that they like to eat, okay? So if any of you are coming from far away, at least far from me, not Canada, uh, you can share some facts with us about where you're coming from and I'd love to hear what you want us to know. Um, it's much more interesting than what Google might have to say. Okay, I might pick things that I think are interesting, but to you, maybe you're not. Okay, however, Canadians, do not feel left out. If you, <laughs> if you want to share something about where you're from, I would also like to share it too. Okay, wonderful. I hope you enjoyed learning about Nepal today. I'd love to see any pictures of you taking part in the clothespin popsicle stick challenge. I do see that a friend recommended that someone else just watch the beginning of the video uh, to hear that activity. Um, I'll be done in a minute and you can go in right about in the middle, find my explanation, or you can click in the link at the bottom. I would like to remind you of the riddle as well before we go. What occurs once in a minute, twice in a moment, and never in a thousand years? It's a good one. All right. Have a wonderful day, everyone. I'll see you tomorrow uh, for our Petit Coin Francais on Thursdays. And in Monica's words in Nepali, namaste. Au revoir.